want to say tonight, in my head, that it's daytime. That's the sun shining out there. Hallelujah. Yeah. I hope it is. Praise God. Well, it's wonderful to be in the last days sailing. Yes. On our way to heaven. The old yes. devil, he's he's powerful now, but he just ain't powerful enough. He's not uh, in the back side of hell sipping hot lemonade. All right. He likes to go to church. He likes to try to stop us, but he can't do it. All the only way the devil can stop you is if you help him. As long as you don't help him, you're going to be victorious. Uh, we've enjoyed being here again this year. It's just been wonderful. And uh, good to have Brother Barrett and his wife with us this week, too. Amen, and uh, glad to have you that are visiting today. Enjoy the good singing. Hallelujah. Uh, I like something that touches me, stirs me. Amen. God has never failed. No. Hallelujah. Put him to the test. He'll come out on top every time. Amen. Well, my wife testified. We really enjoyed the good fellowship also with the Sparkses. Amen. Appreciate them, their spirit that they have for God. Amen. So say so thank you for everything you've given. And uh, if it's up to me, I'd pray for the food right now. Pray over it. But I've been preached. Amen. Looking forward to that. All right. I want my wife to say something. someone saw this poster promoting a Red Cross blood drive. It said, I gave my blood. Christ gave his. I give a pint. He gave all. The needle for me was small and sharp, but the nails for him were large and dull. The table soft and restful, but the cross rough and painful. The nurses kind and gentle, but the soldier's cruel and mean. The crowd applaud my sacrifice, but they reviled him. Mine was O positive, his for possibly all. Mine at best will proclaim a life for a while. His without doubt can save all forever. 
Praise God. Oh, what the precious blood of Jesus can do. Amen. Revelation chapter 1, verse 10. You help me here today. Revelation chapter 1, verse 10. Some people say Revelation's all mixed up. No, you're mixed up. <laughs> it ain't a bit mixed up. Hallelujah. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, now this is written in red, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus and unto Samaria, Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, Pergamos and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardius, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paths with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet were like an undefined brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shining in his stream. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord. What a wonderful day to be alive in your house. Asking you right now, God, that you will help somebody in this service. Minister to needs. Use me as an instrument and tool in your hand. I glorify you, Lord. Lift you up. You've never done me nothing but good. Would you minister through me to the people? Help people to receive from you today, God. You are mighty and high and lifted up. Your train does fill the temple. Asking you right now that you will meet needs in this house. In your name, amen. You may be seated. Young man was in the Vietnam War. His dad was a art collector, millionaire. And so one of the buddies of his son that was in Vietnam was just an amateur artist. And he said, I'd like to paint your picture. And so he did. And he told him, he said, my dad is an art collector. And we're going to come up sometime soon to some great battle, no doubt. And said, if I die, I want you to take that picture and go to where my dad lives when you get back in the States and hand him that picture and give it to him. And so it did happen. He died in battle. And he took that picture that he had painted of his friend, took it home when he got back to the States, and then found out where his father lived went to that door and told him the story and handed him that picture. It wasn't nothing great. He was just an amateur painter. But he kept it and he put it in all this other art collection. And he had a time that when he would die, he wanted all of his art collection to be auctioned off. And he gave the lawyer the information and so the day came, he died, and now the collection was going to be auctioned off. As they started that auction out, they started out with that picture. They couldn't get anybody to even give $10. And so the auctioneer said, well, start out at five. Started out at five. And then somebody said, I'll give 10 
And that's as far as it got. And he hit that down on the table and said, this auction is over. And there was people ooh and and ah and why? Why? What do you mean? And he said, the owner of this art collection was the father of the boy in this picture. And he said, whoever gets my only son gets it all. Praise God. Right. Isn't that something? Yes. That's just oh. like our Lord. Whoever gets him gets it all. Yeah, right. I don't need anybody else. Right. Hey Amen. These are desperate times. But our God is all sufficient. He has not failed. He cannot fail. He will not fail. We're living in the most exciting time of the church that we've ever known. This is our finest hour. We could see dead bodies rise from the ground and then go up to meet our Lord. Yet this is the end time. It's a dangerous day. Terrorists could attack our nation once again. Many churches, I'm afraid, are sluggish today. And many saints have lost their burden for the church. Some of our preachers are hooked on secret sins. The spirit of the world has got a grip on our church folks. And the devil wants us to hang our heart on the willow. Amen. To give up. Amen. The devil has affected our homes, infected some of the pulpits. But let me come to tell you on this day of homecoming, amen, that Jesus is still Lord and he is still in charge and he's still in control and my God is not dead and he cannot die. His son died but did not stay dead. We are God's vessels, elect. We are the special forces that's been anointed. Can you say amen? God has never left his people clueless in a time of calamity. God is not a God of location. He's a God of situations. And he's here and he's there for you. The devil is not the only unhuman in our valley. The lily is in the valley. And we have an untimed God. Yes, we do. And my God don't have the lock jaw this morning. But he's high and lifted up. And my Bible said he is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask. Nothing major and nothing minimal ever gets, amen, God behind. He operates in the extreme, whether it's fishes and loaves, rods and wires, whether it's lions and whales, God always has the final say. Amen. That doctor that brings the bad news does not have the final say. That cancer report does not have the final say. Moses did not need a water pump. He did not need a navy ship. He did not need the Coast Guard. He just needed a rod with God behind it. Amen. That woman up the well did not need a bucket. Did not need a long rope. The whale was sitting on the well, and his name was Jesus Christ. That lame man did not need a crutch. He did not need a walker. He did not need nothing but the Lamb of God slain from the foundations of the world. Somebody say amen. Amen. 
in the midst of the gloom and the doom. I'm not discouraged this morning. Hey, man, I've got 66 books, Route 66, 42 authors. Hey, man, the KJV Black Book Contract, that's the living Bible. Praise God. Our Bible from Genesis to Revelation is nothing more than a picture of Jesus Christ everywhere you look in some form or way. The Bible said he's the beginning and the ending. He's not the end. That has a stopping point. He's the beginning and the ending. The continuance. Amen. And he is eternal. He don't stop nowhere except time to help somebody. From Genesis, he grows all the way through to the greatness and revelation. In Genesis, God said, let us make man. Right there he is. He was there without father and mother. He was Jesus as word, helping God. In Genesis, the front door of the Bible, you see the reference of Christ. Let us, plural, make man. Then in chapter 3, God asked the first question. Adam, where art thou? He don't mean positionally. He knows everything and everywhere. He wanted to know what are you in me, Adam? God was there. Adam was there. The serpent was there. And Eve was there. And God was about to pronounce the curse on the whole nation, the whole creation. And then in verse 15 of chapter 3 is the first description of Christ. God said, I will put enmity between thy seed and her seed. There he is again. Somebody said, I'd like to live in the garden of Eden. I'd rather live in the last days where we are right now. Amen. John fell down before him. Amen. I'm preaching this morning or this afternoon. I'm preaching on the white-headed Jesus. His eyes as a flame of fire. His hair is as white as wool. His feet like fine brass. His voice is the sound of many waters. I'd rather see him as the sword comes out of his mouth than to see him as the seed of the woman. Then you go on further in the Bible. Solomon looked at Jesus as the song of Solomon. This book is the prophecy of the coming church. A day of relationship between Christ and and his church. Solomon is the story of the woman and the king. But it's really the prophecy of the bride and Christ. Chapter 5, she is the church. And the Bible said in verse 2, I sleep. My beloved knocketh and say open on the door. She says, but my coat is off. My feet is washed. I'm already in the bed. When she finally crawls out of there and goes to the door, all she gets is the aroma of that he was there. Amen. And then in verse 9, they of the street, the world, when she went out to the world, the Bible said, what is thy beloved more than another beloved? Amen. Genesis 3 is a picture as the seed of a woman. But the further you go in the Bible, the bigger Jesus gets, the larger and greater Christ is. He's bigger in Exodus than he was in Genesis. And then when you get here in Solomon, amen, we're over halfway through the Old Testament. She said, my beloved is white and ready and the chiefest among 10,000. Amen. His head, the Bible said, is most fine gold. His locks of hair are black like a raven. And his eyes are as doves. Go back to Genesis. 
the seed of a woman. And then Solomon, a young man with a ruddy countenance, complexion with bushy black hair. He gets bigger. He gets better. The further you go with the gospel. Here in Solomon, he's young. He's courting. But John in Revelation, where we're at this very day, tells us of the same Christ. In the last days, he's not a young Christ. He's not just in the womb of Mary to be. He's not grave in black hair. He's mature and he's wise and he is powerful. His hair has turned white as wool. Say amen. amen. The Shunammite lady was like the church in Solomon. She said his eyes were like doves. But John said in our day, amen, his eyes are as fire. I'm not belittling at all, but my Christ today is not black-headed. He's not just a seed that's going to happen. Amen. We're serving a mature, wise, all-powerful Christ. Eyes of fire, hair as white as snow. Mary saw him as a babe in swaddling clothes. The disciples saw him walking on the water. The wedding guests saw him turn water into wine. Amen. The blind man saw him for the very first time. But from the Genesis down through the law and past the prophets and past the gospels and beyond the epistles. Nobody's ever seen Christ like the last day church can see him. Thank God for Bethlehem baby. But my Jesus today is beyond the cradle and beyond the manger. He stands high and lifted up and his train fills the temple. Praise God, he's standing right now at the right hand of the Father on a high as Lord. Can you say amen? Amen. His mother saw him as a crucified lamb. His mother could have possibly reached out below that cross and let that blood fall in her hands and rub it in her hands. She could have went and let that blood that dropped at the foot of the cross from his seven wounds and got her hands mixed in with that dirt and thought man's made from the dust of the ground. But Jesus, the overcomer, Hallelujah. He's mighty and holy. John saw him in our day. His feet as fine brass. Say amen. 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 You see, the devil wants to keep this day in our generation away from the catching away spirit. One day that Antichrist will rule this world, the economy, the religious world, the politics. He will bring on the mark of the beast where one cannot buy nor sell without a mark. But for three and a half years, he will be like a small G God. Amen. When Israel realizes that they have been deceived, they're going to cry out for that white headed Jesus. Amen. And Jesus is going to turn to one of his angels and say, go and get my horse. Amen. He will lead that horse out of heaven's stables. And Jesus will mount upon that horse that's white. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I want to say, look angel, you go get my horse too. I've already got my horse named Lightning. Praise God. And we're going to ride out of the heavens. Praise God. A stampede of white horses. Amen. Past the Milky Way. Our horses will be hitting meteorites with their hooves. And the nostrils will be flaming back and forth. Sinners say, you people don't have any fun, you bunch of amen holiness people. 
I think if we can sleep with a den of lions, history says 300 of them probably in that den where Daniel was, I'd say that's pretty adventurous. What about three days in that blubber hotel? Amen. And that great fish, I'd say that's a pretty good experience. Amen. But that horse is heading with all those behind him to the Mount of Olives. That Euphrates, amen, Euphrates River is going to dry up. And Zechariah prophesied and said, on that day, the mountain will break asunder. Can you imagine the sound of that mountain breaking in two? Giving the Antichrist attention. And the Antichrist and all of his wimps, amen, and imps, the Bible calls them the kings of the earth. They were think, amen, of the sound of thousands of horses charging down toward the earth. I can hear that Antichrist say, go get that astrologer. And he gets over there and says, look up into that telescope. And the astrologer gets there and he looks up there and says, oh. Antichrist said, what do you mean, oh? Oh, thousands of horses. And they're all white. And they're heading this way. And I can hear that in a cry still. Hey, that astrologer. What about that first rider? I want to know about that first rider. Hey, man, that astrologer looks back up there and says, Oh, he's in the front, all right. He's got some kind of red coat on him. Oh, God. Hey, man. And it's got words on it. And that Antichrist said, Tell me about it. He said, I can't yet. I'm looking at a head. Amen. And many crowns and fire coming out of his eyes. I'm looking at a sword coming out of his mouth. Amen. And the Antichrist says, Focus in on that first rider and tell me something. That astrologer looks through there, looks up there, and says, that red vesture's got words on it. What is it? Oh, uh, you don't want to know. <laughs> you don't want to know. What is it? King of kings and Lord of lords. Oh. That's the man I've been impersonating and acting like. Oh, we're all in trouble. But what else do you see? What else? Right behind him is another horse and thousands. But that one right behind him, that looks like an old Terry Bolin. <laughs> ah, look at that. He can gallop him as fast as he can. Hey, man. I can see all the computers shut down and all the lights go out. And the white horses with the army of God on a dead run for the Mount of Olives makes me want to sing. He's coming back like he said. He's coming back like he said. Nobody can stop his return. Almighty God is going to come back with his son. And the devil is developing his army today, right now. He don't want us ready for the coming of Jesus. Hallelujah. He's going to trample. Over our enemies. I know it's the end time. But I'm not discouraged. And I'm not dismayed. And I'm not taking the tuck head. And I'm not going to crawl dead. Like they say in Louisiana. 
Amen. Greater is he that is in you and I than he that is in the world. 66 books in the Bible and the further you go, the greater he becomes. No book in the Bible shows a more greater description of Christ and more powerful and more authoritative and wise as John said as he looked in the last days and saw the white-headed Jesus. Why would I want to go back to the Garden of Eden? Why would I want to trade the one whose speed is as fine brass for the seed of a woman or a black-headed Jesus who was younger? I am serving the Lord. He's in the heavens. His hair is white. He's the son the Father. He's already fought every devil and every demon. He's already won every war and every battle. He's already defeated everything that's ever come against him. His hair is white as wool. I don't want a black-headed Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Thomas saw him with nail prints. John never mentioned any nail prints in his day in his hand. But he did say, I saw in his hand holding the seven stars. Hey Amen. Not only does Christ become greater, but his word becomes more powerful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Think about it. Oh, God. You go back to Moses. The word was like a rod. You go back to David. The word was like a staff and a stone. But in the last days, John, he didn't see stone. He didn't see a sling. He didn't see a rod that turned to a snake. Oh, no. It was a sharp two-edged sword coming out of his mouth. Would I trade places with David? Would I trade places with Abraham? Would I trade places with Moses? Not on your life. Hey, man. We've got more than a staff. And more than a stone. And more than a stick. We've got a two-edged sword. And it's coming out of the mouth of Jesus. Can you say amen? Praise God. In the book of Acts, the book of the Holy Ghost, the book of the yellow pages of the disciples, the book of the Holy Ghost itself, the Bible said, mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. Now watch this. In the Acts, it wasn't even full grown yet. John wrote us a letter that said, it's not a tender plant. That we're talking about. Amen. Growing up in a dry root. He said so we're talking about that. We're talking about a sharp two edged sword. If David can win with a stone. What in the world can we do. With a two edged sword. That cuts that way. And that way. And that way. And that way. In the acts. The word was growing. In the acts. They didn't even have the book of acts. At Pentecost, they didn't even have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They had the men, but not the books. Right. At Pentecost, they just had half of a book, and it was the old half. Right. Hey, Amen. And they took the Old Testament and healed the lame and cast out devils. If they did all of that with half of the old book, what should we be doing with a full grown, blown Bible? 66 books, 42 authors. My God. Amen. Peter and John said to that lame man, Rise up and walk. And they didn't even have the book of James yet that says, Any sick among you, let them call for the elders of the church, and they will pray for the sick, and they shall be healed. John of Revelation shows us a Christ of our day in 2015. And it's not the Old Testament only. It's a sharp two-edged sword that cuts both ways. Praise God. We've got the power of the book of Genesis and the book of Revelation. 
amen. And you know what? The book of Revelation hasn't ended either. And there's no amen in the book of Acts. Those are the only two books that's not ended. My God, what are we going to be today? He's never been greater, amen, than he is right now. John at this time is not talking about the tribulation, Jesus. Amen. He's not discussing the millennium, Christ. This is the first chapter. Amen. What's amazing is how happy that the book of Acts church was. The Bible said they were turning the world upside down. They were amazing people. People had their mouths dropped open. What's this crowd doing? And you know what? When they did all of that, they didn't even have the book of Revelation. Right. They don't know about streets of gold and walls of jasper. They don't know about gates of pearl. Amen. Twelve gates entering the city. Twelve foundations. They don't even know anything about that. Amen. And no generation has had the manifest word of God in its completeness. Like us right now. Right. We've got the whole Bible. I want to tell you. I want to inform you. It's time to get past your troubles. And your problems. And your trials. And look to the glorified Christ. That's never lost a battle. Hey man. They talk about going undefeated. In these sport events. I'm talking about one billion to zero. He ain't ever lost at nothing. Hey Amen. And did you know that Jesus never done one thing for himself? You can't find where he ever done anything for himself. Everything he done was for others. Laid it out. I believe this Bible from the very holy Bible written in gold on the front all the way to genuine leather, leather at the bottom of the back of the book. Hey! Hallelujah. If the Bible said that Jonah got swallowed by a toad, frog, or a tadpole, or anything metamorphous, hey amen, I believe it, but I don't have to go there. Because Jesus has already bled and died and give us life eternal. I'm telling somebody quit whining in your root beer. My God, Jesus is white-headed and on the throne. And the earth where we're at is his footstool. we got his feet all about us. Woo, my Lord and my God. we got his feet all about us. And they're like fine brass. There ain't nothing greater than God. Nothing better than this Jesus. That's right, brother. I wish I could help you. Painted it. Never owned it. We owned it then. Couldn't pay. Jesus paid for it. He paid for us. Paved the road for us. Got a place for us. Preparing in the heavens. Oh, God. What a great God. Coming back. You just imagine that corral in heaven all them top horses. Oh, can you just imagine the barn they've got up there for all them horses. Can you imagine the beautiful fields in that heaven as they just run out there? Ah, some of these days, I'm going to tell old lightning, come on, boy. Gonna get on his back. Oh. It's not fantasy. It's not make believe. It's gonna right. happen. Right. Woo, it's gonna happen. Whip that devil in the form of man the Antichrist. Blood up to the bridles of the horses. But we're gonna win. Right. Then read the last book. It's a fixed fight. We're gonna win. Let's stand up right now and glorify the same form of sin. 